I'm gonna show you how to use one of these, a pro foam gun. So a lot of us may have used a product like this before, basically just your basic spray can foam. I'll show you how to use a pro gun, which this is a, there's a couple different models out there, but this is one of them that's made by Dow. Comes in a package like this. This is the Pro 14. So there's a version that they call the Pro 13, 14, and 15. The Pro 13 is a is a basic uh, plastic like this, but it's more of a throwaway. So it's a use one and done, and then dispose of it. This one is meant to be reused, and then the higher grade one, the 15, is a little more durable than this guy. But if you're getting started, you can probably get one of, pick one of these up between 45 and 50 bucks. So what are the advantages of using something like this over one of these guys? A couple problems you may have encountered with using something like this is control. So you really don't have a lot of control on whatever you have coming out of this straw. You, it's kind of, your control is very limited. The other thing is these guys aren't reusable. Once you tap, put this straw to this can and tap it, it's over. You gotta use it all. It's all or nothing. I, what I've done before is the foam inside the straw will start to cure. And then what I'll actually end up doing is slicing the end off with a razor blade. And sometimes it hasn't cured all the way back here yet. And so I'm actually able to reuse some of it, but that doesn't get me any longer than like a day or two. So why use one of these? Better control. You're gonna have better control over the bead that you're laying by how much foam you're releasing quickly. Another big reason is that you don't get any dripping from the straw. So as soon as you close this, it's closed. This is because the trigger mechanism controls a rod that goes through the gun and opens and closes it right at the end of the tip. With one of these, you'll apply pressure and because the foam in the straw is expanding and isn't actually closed off at the end, it will continue to drip after you've quit squeezing the can. So with this one, you get more control and no drippage. The ability to reuse the cans of foam. It's not like one of these where you use some and if you have some left over, you just throw it. Another reason is higher yield. These types of cans, for whatever reason, probably because they're larger, but the manufacturer also says that you get a higher yield for volume with these than the just straw style cans. Number three, if you do foaming a lot, like if you're gonna be doing a big project or using this a lot, um, it really is a pro series thing. Or if you just have a big project and have a lot to do, if all you need is a can, you're fine sticking with one of these, but if you're doing a lot of it, this is gonna help. Cured spray foam like this is a closed cell foam. It's low expansion, it's water resistant, not waterproof. More than anything, what we wanna use it for is air sealing. So it's gonna stop airflow, cold air, warm air in the opposite of the heating and cooling seasons when we don't want air infiltration, and the other thing to consider too is if you have an insect problem, anywhere that you can stop air is gonna be an opportunity to be able to stop insects. Basic anatomy of the gun, you have the tube here, regulator back here, you can unroll it and that adjusts how far you can squeeze this out. The gun trigger and pistol grip. What's gonna be really nice is the tip. So you'll notice if you squeeze the trigger, it opens up at the end of the tip and a very fine pointed tip like this allows for a lot of control. This is Teflon coated. So when you put one of these guys on here, I'm gonna end up using Ooh, this one today. Something you're gonna to wanna to have on hand is a spray bottle filled with water. This stuff actually uses water to cure. So it uses moisture. So if you are in a building that has a relatively low humidity, sometimes you'll have a problem with this curing. So you're gonna want one of those. You're gonna want some gloves because this stuff is pretty sticky and hard to get off. To have some safety glasses or safety goggles with you because this is not something you want to get in your eyes. So you always want to make sure you have a good seal. Along with that, another tip is to be very careful with this tip. So you never want to apply foam with this gun, something like concrete or stone or anything abrasive like that that could scratch this tip because if this tip doesn't seal, air is going to be allowed to get in there and if air, that air is going to bring moisture with it and that will cause the foam to cure inside your nozzle. You don't want that because then this gun is basically ruined. If you do need to apply foam to an abrasive surface like concrete or stone, hold the tip of the gun above the surface of that material. That way it doesn't come in contact with it. The other thing you're going to want to pick up is tool cleaner. A little pro tip here. One of the mistakes I've seen people make with gun setups like this is they'll actually leave the cleaner on the gun. This cleaner is meant to blow out the gun and that's it. So you clean the gun and then you detach it. And read the instructions on here. There's a way that you depressurize it as you're detaching it so it doesn't kind of like 
blow up in your face, there's acetone in here. And what's gonna happen is the acetone is actually going to eat away the internal components of the gun and the Teflon coating here. And that will make it uh, eventually unusable. So while it does a great job of cleaning uncured foam, if you have a uh, foam that cures inside the nozzle, your gun is toast, it's over. How to apply it? I'm gonna show you next how to load the gun and get it set up to use. First thing we're gonna wanna do, shake the cane vigorously, which means with great effort and triumph. Wear gloves and protective eyewear. Protective eyewear. I'm gonna put my protective eyewear on. Simply screw the can of foam onto the gun. Like so. And now it should be ready to foam. If you need to store it in between uses, simply store it upside down like that. And that should be good for 30 days. So you can store it just like this without using it for 30 days and without disconnecting this. If you disconnect this, you're going to introduce air into it. And that's where you need to make sure that you use the cleaner. Other than that, we should be ready to foam. It's back behind this stud, so insulation is gonna go against here, but we have a small gap here, and we wanna make sure we insulate that. So now that we're ready to do this, I'm gonna press this material back with one hand, and then just get our mist in there. Same from the other side. And then we're just gonna stick the nozzle in here and start applying the foam. Keep can inverted during use, AKA upside down. Make any adjustments to the regulator or control knob on the gun to ensure the flow rate you desire. Fill gap to only 50% and allow for proper expansion. Depress the trigger and apply the foam in a continuous bead if possible. Be sure to wipe any foam off the tip of the gun as you go before it has a chance to cure. And if I didn't get enough, I can come back on the other side here. And I don't want to get too much, but I'm not afraid to get too much because if it expands outside of this, I can always come back afterwards and shave it off. And once again, we'll mist it. Then wait for the foam to cure. Here's what it looks like after the foam is cured. Once the foam has cured, you can trim back any excess as needed. This shot I really just wanted to include so you can see how easy it is to have really good control over getting one of these penetrations. You don't need a ton of foam, right? With your straw can of foam, you got pretty much one speed and it's full bore. This one, you can really dial it back and get it so, you know, it's just enough foam, not too little, not too much. Um, and you can really lay a bead that's really clean, really neat, and go pretty fast with it too. You really just have superior control with a foam gun like this. I wanna show you some shots next after the foam has cured. So these ones here have been sprayed with a regular spray can with a straw, and you see you get a lot of drippage. It's hard to get good control over the foam, and obviously foam, regardless of how you spray it, expands. But here's the cured foam after of that penetration that we did and you can see it was just a lot easier to make it look pretty neat. So one thing I've found is that a rig actually works better than a paper towel for wiping off the nozzle just because the paper towel tends to break and stick to it. So say for example when you're done your nozzle ends up looking like that. So you want to get to that foam before it cures um, with some cleaner. So I'm going to pop the top off this. You can use some acetone too that will also dissolve uncured foam. And then I'm just gonna take a rig, make sure I have safety glasses on because you do not want this stuff in your eyes. And I'm gonna leave this attached because I'm gonna reuse it so I don't wanna run, run it through the gun. I just wanna get the gunk on the outside off my nozzle. So I'm just gonna do this. Get some cleaner on my rig and wipe it off. So to get this to come out without having it attached to the gun, you're just gonna take that little nozzle, press down on it with a cloth, and my rig, aim it away from my face. I have my glasses on just in case. I'm just gonna take my thumb here and press against the nozzle. And you can hear that. And then you'll also feel it get damp as you do that. Also keep in mind acetone is highly flammable. If you're working in a room where you have a pilot light, like um, perhaps a utility room, where there's a furnace or a gas fire, water heater, uh, do not use this there, or make sure that you've turned off those appliances, including the pilot lights if you're there. And then to store, simply, we have the nozzle all clean, and then we are just going to take this regulator valve, spin it clockwise to close, until we can't spin it anymore, and it's ready to store, just like this, so for the next 30 days, I can come back and reuse it.
If you plan on storing this longer for 30 days, what you'll want to do is come back, um, shake this again, and then simply spray some new foam through it. And you should be good to go for another 30. Looks like they're still a little in there under pressure from last time. So we'll open it up. Then what you want to do is hold it open as you attach this guy a little bit so you don't get any spray because obviously as you're decompressing this before this locks into here and seals it could possibly now it's gonna be hard to do just because of this anatomy but it's possible that it come back good come back and spray in the face in the eyes or something so you also want to be wearing safety glasses so we're gonna slightly depress the trigger as we screw this in relatively quickly if we can and then we're ready to we're ready to clean out the gun and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically pull the trigger blow it until it blows clear that's pretty good right there just kind of like blowing your nose except it's not at all like that just have a little pressure in the gun I'll let that out and then close our valve down and she is cleaned out and ready for next time a little bit of troubleshooting if your foam is actually shrinking instead of expanding what's most likely happening is that there isn't a high enough moisture content in the air so that's where you're definitely going to need one of these a foam malfunction or failure is more often a problem with the environment that you're spraying in than the actual foam itself although it could be defective but more often than not, it's gonna be your environmental condition. Different types of these foams have different application temperatures and relative humili humidities. Make sure you read the instructions depending on what application you're using. So for example, this one, the window and door foam, this one needs to be sprayed above 40 degrees with a relative humidity of at least 50. Too low of relative humidity or it's too cold outside. And there you go, that's how you use a Pro 14 foam gun. Until next time, go foam something. Basically, it just looks like a bunch of nasty Play-Doh. Just old and crusty. See that the bugs. I need a paper towel. This stuff is not eye friendly. Would not consider it a teardrop solution or contact solution. Don't use it for that. It's more like a, it will make you go blind solution. Don't want none of that.